It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I think I've got what it takes. I want it bad, I want to win. This is one tough competition. I'll be living my passion, I'll be living my dream, really, if I win this. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six amateur cooks all want to be crowned Master Chef, but only one can go through to the quarter final. We have amateur cooks coming here who dream of being a famous chef and are desperate to find out just how good they really are. Can they hold their nerve? Do they have enough knowledge? Do they have a big enough repertoire? And do they have the skill to make it as our champion? Good day and a very, very warm welcome to MasterChef. You have to prepare one decent plate of food. And it's also got to demonstrate some culinary ability. You do that, you're through. Keep your nerve. 50 minutes, one plate of food, ladies and gentlemen. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of the ingredients in front of them, including chicken, bacon, lentils, lemon, potato, rhubarb, goat's cheese and tarragon. Andrew, you seem to be well on your way. Yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. It looks like, to me, you've been practising. Yes, you've got a few, few scars, a few burns. Yeah, I, to be honest, I'd, I'd like to lie, but they are actually cat marks. They're cat marks? Yeah, I've recently got some kittens. So. <laughs> what, sort of, what sort of cook are you, Andrew? Um, fairly flamboyant. I'm not someone who sticks to natural recipes. I like to, you know, source things up. 26-year-old Andrew is confident about his cooking. The same can't be said of his clock watching. My weakness completely is timing. Um, my, my time is always off. Accountant John hopes his competitive nature will give him the winning edge. On a scale of 1 to 10 of wanting this, I would say it's at least 10. You've gone for a tricky option here, because it looks like you're making pastry. I am. Um, I suppose my main thing is I like cooking um, sweets, tarts, things like that. You're a, an accountant. You've obviously done your sums. Yeah. You've decided to take on a new world, cooking. What's the yes. idea of that? I like cooking. I know how to run a business, so it seems to be the logical thing if I can find both. Well, hey. Year-old Ruth hopes Master Chef will allow her to realise her ultimate dream. I really love to own a restaurant by the sea, kind of down by West Wales. And if I was to win this, that dream would be realised. Ruth? Yep. What do you got? An attempt on uh, chicken lemon ravioli. It's what uh, hit me when I saw the ingredients. How far do you think you can get in Master Chef, Ruth? <laughs> well, I'm hoping to the finals. You think you can make it all the way to the end? I hope so. Yeah. Halfway. We've got 25 minutes left. What are you making for us, Sonia? I'm doing a chicken Kiev. Why have you suddenly gone into a little bit of a flat panic? Um, I tried to do white wine sauce. It went a bit wrong, so I'm going to have to start that again. How good a cook are you then, Sonia? Well, it's one thing cooking at home for your friends and family, and they tell you that you're good, but if you guys like my food, then that will really just confirm that maybe I have got something there. Housewife Sonia wants to start her own catering business. I want a Korean food and MasterChef can give me that. I see you in the dream is. The dream is my own gastro pub to be cooking for um, local people, um, local ingredients from the local farms. What's your day job? I'm actually a dental technician. I, I make false teeth, basically. Ashley believes his career in dentistry has prepared him well for the heat of the kitchen. I'm sort of fairly used to uh, deadlines and, um, and producing, you know, work in short time. Instead of sort of making food, I make teeth, basically, under pressure. Lisa, 
Yes. Is your favourite colour blue? <laughs> it is today. <laughs> you cut yourself about three times already. And the panic doesn't help. What's your main culinary influence? I have to say it's Lebanese cooking from my grandma. But we're not going to get any of that today. No, it's gone towards the French. Lebanese-born Elisa dreams of owning a restaurant showcasing Mediterranean cuisine. I never knew I wanted something as much as I want this in my whole life. So I'm going to grab it and do the best I can. Ladies and gentlemen, you've only got five minutes. You should be plating up. That's it. Time's up. Time is up. Dental technician Ashley hopes his oven-roasted chicken stuffed with goat's cheese and smoked bacon will kickstart a new career in food. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not all amalgamating into one glorious plate. We have some potatoes, we have some courgettes, which are slightly burnt. It hasn't quite come together as a dish. There's no single one definitive flavour. It's not filling me with joy, I've got to say. It just didn't flow, you know, with the no. sort of pressure of the day. Ruth's culinary dreams rest with her lemon chicken ravioli. The pasta could be a little bit lighter mm. and it needs a broth. It does need to be more moist. Despite concerns about his timekeeping, Andrew's turned out pan-fried chicken with bacon and lentils. But will the flavours impress? Crispy chicken skin. Just got a touch of spice at the back of my throat. And actually, it tastes a lot better than it looks. That's what I was hoping for. It's beautifully moist chicken. You also get the smokiness of the bacon. Well, look at you, and I look at that, and I reckon there might be a cook in there. Stay-at-home mum Elisa hopes to impress with pan-fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and a tarragon sauce. That chicken's very well cooked, and there is bags and bags of flavour in there. The tarragon is the star. Really lovely deep flavour, nice crispy skin. It's pretty good. Accountant John is counting on his rhubarb tart, fresh cream and crushed ginger nuts to get him through to the next round. It's a little bit scruffy, but uh, the pastry is very light. It's sweet and yet still sharp. That's a pretty good tart. Thank you. I've got to say, not bad. Housewife Sonia hopes her chicken Kiev with chips and white wine sauce will get the judge's seal of approval. Crumb chicken is a real crowd pleaser and it's tasty. It's not bad. Yeah, I like chicken and chips. Left to my own devices, I'd, I'd lick the plate clean. What's tough today <laughs> is this room seems to be packed full of good cooks. Now it's decision time. You know the rules. There are six of you, but three of you will be going home. Off you go. I really enjoyed that. I thought the standard of cooking was fantastic. The difficulty is right now, we've got six good cooks and we've got to choose three. I thought uh, what John did showed a lot of skill. Lovely buttery pastry, not too sweet, great cream, ginger nuts on top. The guy can cook. Nothing wrong with that dish at all. John's in. Ashley, let's talk about Ashley. He had chicken with flabby skin and he had courgettes that were burnt. The problem for me with Ashley's food was it amalgamated to become just one flavour. There was nothing defined about it. 
halfway through I kind of had a brainwave of what I wanted to do and then it was too late really and um, no I didn't go very well at all unfortunately. Is Ashley going home? He's on his way. Right let's move on. Should we have a quick chat about Andrew? I love the way Andrew tried desperately to get flavour into those lentils. He knew what he was going to do, he knew how to get to that end product. Andrew's chicken was excellent. Crispy skin, moist flesh. That's a perfect chicken. It doesn't get better than that. John and Andrew in. We know that we're going to send Ashley home. We've got three ladies up for debate and they are three good cooks. We've only got one place. I would have happily eaten each of those plates, but not Ruth's. You don't eat plates of dry pasta. It didn't have a sauce, it wasn't moist, it did not deliver. I could have done cream sauce or something to go with it and it just didn't enter my head. There's panic, panic, panic. This is Ashley out and Ruth out. Elisa or Sonia? You're not sure, are you, about Elisa? I thought that was a glorious plate of food. I mean, it was soft, creamy, buttery, crispy skin chicken and that lovely tarragon, that was great. Sonia did the chicken with the crumb, with the, the flavour in the centre of it, and the chips and the sauce. We didn't have enough sauce. And, you know, chicken Kiev and chips. You said you would have eaten the whole plate happily. Mm, no, I would have done. I would have done. This is a tough one. Really tough one. Who's it going to be? Well done. Tough competition. Three of you are staying and three of you are going home. Ashley, you are leaving us, my friend. I'm sorry. Ruth, you're also leaving us. I'm sorry. We only need to lose one more. John. You're staying with us, John. Thank you. Andrew, you're staying with us as well. Lisa, Sonia, Sonia, I'm sorry. Congratulations, Elisa. Well done. Very well done. It's a great standing. Um, ecstatic, surprised. Um, I didn't expect to go through today. I'm on top of the world, absolutely. The fact that I can cook a uh, rhubarb tart that John and Greg like means the world to me. I can breathe, yeah. Ooh. What a round. This competition gets better and better and better. But now we start to really see what these guys are all about. Because tomorrow they go to a professional kitchen and that's when we find out can they cope with the pressure. Who is going to come out of this with credit? Who is going to come out of this still smiling? Who is going to come out of this with all their fingers intact? Day two, and the contestants arrive at the Cavendish Hotel in central London. Good morning. Elisa. Hi, Elisa. Andrew. Andrew, hi. John. Where John. they'll be hi. cooking hi. at hi. Chef David hi. Britton's hi. restaurant. We've got a full restaurant for lunch today. We've got really, really high standards here, and I do not, on any circumstances, want to see them drop, OK? Each of our contestants will be responsible for cooking and plating one main course. Andrew is in charge of the pollock, served with mussels, clams, and a saffron sauce. Elisa's cooking the sea bass with aubergine puree and a balsamic glaze. All right, now comes the crunch. While John has volunteered to cook the herb-encrusted rack of lamb, cream potatoes and rosemary sauce. The clock hits 12 and the lunchtime rush begins. Medium, sea bass of pollock. Yes, chef. Andrew begins confidently. His first pollock is faultless. Yeah, it looks really good. Well done. Thank you. They're all like that. Having a nice day. Elisa is also cooking with confidence, but her presentation is another matter. Ah. No, OK, we're going to have to do that again. Looks like a two-year-old. <laughs> Sorry to say it. I have a niece who does a better job than that. Potato rocket, one liver, one asparagus. Despite a couple of plating problems, Elisa is getting her food out, which is more than can be said for John. This lamb has been away for 10 minutes now. We've got to get it out. I've got two, three minutes, for it, Chef. Another three. You said three minutes three minutes ago. OK, listen. Very well done one. That's the very well done one. Look what you've got, yeah? Look what you've got. 
30 minutes into service and he finally gets his first lamb up to the pass. Do you want to plate one up? Uh, could you wait till I get these organised first? Oh, really? No. I'll plate myself. <laughs> Sorry, Chef. Me too. Four asparagus, one soup. While John has yet to plate up even one lamb dish, Andrew appears right at home cooking the pollock. No problems at all, as yet, apart from burning my fingers at the very beginning. Elisa is also enjoying the challenge. OK, that's good to go, yeah? But for John, things continue to go from bad to worse. I gave myself the short end of the straw of picking the lamb, but I suppose it, it could be worse. John. Yes, Chef. Just let me know if we can send any lamb today. It would be great, yeah? Oh, <laughs> Right. With service drawing to a close, Chef David Britton has nothing but praise for two of our contestants. That's great. That's really good, yeah? Thank you, Chef. That's brilliant. Okay. Do you know what? Yeah. I've got a foot wrong all day. Thank well you. Well done. Excuse me, please. John has also left an impression. Three minutes. OK, and again, and again, yeah? Get him in the bin, let's get two more, yeah? Two hours of service and he's still not managed to plate one rack of lamb. That's the last one. Thank you for lunch, guys. Well, most of you, anyway. As a group, I think two of them did very well and I think one of them had an absolute nightmare. John was a disaster, to be honest with you. I think, well, he was basically the only contestant not to plate up a single meal. It's far harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought Alicia did OK. She kept her head down. She'd struggled a little bit when she was playing the first couple. She had a few Picasso pictures of the, um, of the balsamic glaze, but she cooked her sea bass very, very well. After this experience, getting the buzz of it, it just makes sense why we entered this competition. This is why. I thought Andrew was absolutely fantastic. He did a really good day. Every piece of fish he cooked, he cooked it well. The presentation was excellent. If I had to employ someone tomorrow, I would employ Andrew. Without a doubt. I think I did, uh, did a pretty good job, if I may say so myself. It's now back to MasterChef HQ, where the contestants must cook their own two-course menu. Welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. Now, hopefully, you've been inspired. Your two courses, you've got 60 minutes. Let's cook. After a nervous start, Elisa performed well in the restaurant. Now she's hoping to continue the momentum with a Mediterranean-inspired two-course menu. With a look at these lovely ingredients, are we going to get food from your homeland? It's a dish that you eat in Lebanon, you know, on the seaside. What are you doing? I'm doing a milfeu of red mullet and langoustine with aubergine caviar and tahini. And for starter, it's um, a sherry tomato tart. So that's not really Lebanese, is it? No, this is not a Lebanese dish. Is your biggest uh, issue today timing? Yeah, I have to get it right. And if you do get it right, can you win today? Definitely. It's a lovely dish. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Lisa, she's got to keep her nerves and cook very, very well, because I love the ingredients on her bench. Will she complete it in time? And will she have the beautiful edge that it needs to make her a quarter finalist? John impressed with his rhubarb tart in the first round, but had a disaster in the professional kitchen. He needs to prove he's more than a one-hit wonder. What are your dishes today that are going to propel you into a quarter-final? Um, spiced pork chops with um, fresh new potatoes and steamed vegetables, and apple and raisin crumble with brandy cream. You've got fairly simple dishes, so that every single part of those has to be spot on. Um, well, that's the plan, anyway, I hope so. Do you think a pork chop and veg is showing the correct amount of culinary talent? I'm hoping by proving that I can cook a pork chop that's still moist and all that, that, that will show that I can cook meats, simple meats, well. Can you win this, John? Um, don't see any reason why not. That better be the best pork chop I've ever eaten, because that is alarmingly simple. And in the field right now, in the competition the way it is, I tell you what, it's going to be miracles. You're halfway. Halfway. Andrew impressed with big flavours in the invention test and excelled in the pro kitchen. Can he continue his winning run? What are you cooking, Andrew? 
king tiger prawns, uh, which are going to be going on a bit of couscous, a bit of chilli, pack the flavour in. So that's one course. What's the other course? Uh, chocolate truffle tort. What do you think you've got to do today to make you the quarter finalist? I've got to put a smile on both your faces. Andrew is cooking very simple, very elegant, very tasty food. Right now, the battle is on, and that's brilliant. You should be plating up by now, guys. You've got one minute. That's it. Time's up. Walk away. Time's up. Elisa is hoping to secure a quarter-final place with her cherry tomato tart with basil oil, followed by a main of red mullet with seared longustine, aubergine and potatoes. Sweet, sweet tomato. Mm -hmm. And then the heavy, almost metallic taste of basil. Mm -hmm. It's very decent, but it's not Wow. Mm -hmm. It's a tasty dish, but trying to pick it up with a knife and fork is a difficult thing. And when you want to eat food and you can't, it becomes disappointing. Finish with the tart, bring in your mullet dish. I think that's beautiful. It's little hints of garlic, hint of almost peanut butter like tahini. Very clever to involve lots of other green ingredients and still let the fish be the star of the show. Thank you. The aubergine is rich with garlic, the fish is beautifully cooked, and the crisp bread on top gives it texture. It's delicious. This is my passion, my dream. I'm willing to dedicate everything I have to be a master chef. John is aiming to win the judges' vote with his spiced pork chop and chilli sauce, followed by apple and raisin crumble. It's difficult to make comment because it's a pork chop which is overcooked and gone dry. Yeah. It's not exciting. That is what we call a bad plate at the office. Even cooked perfectly, yeah. it would need something else. Yeah. A sauce. From porks to pudding. Look, there's, there's, there's no juice. It's all dry. We've got a few mistakes here, mate. Yeah, we do. It is so much crumble and so few apples, it's sort of like apple muesli. Been a bit of a disaster today. Andrew hopes his pan fried prawns on couscous and vermicelli salad, followed by chocolate tort with crushed pistachio nuts, will secure him a place in the quarter final. I like the flavours of those spring onions, I like the flavour of the garlic. It's tasty, it's just the dish itself coming together as a dish. Just needs a bit of tweaking. Crikey, that's tricky. It's pretty good, but not brilliant. But I wouldn't be saying, oh, you must go to Andrew's restaurant. He does this great prawn dip. You with me? OK. From savoury to sweet. Yeah, it delivers. It's got great texture from the nuts. It's a lovely, soft texture, that mousse. The soundness of the yoghurt works beautifully with it. For me, it's a lovely, lovely dessert. <laughs> Sourness going into chocolate sweetness and an extra note of the sweet pistachio. It's very, very good indeed. Well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now have to make a decision. 
We only have one quarterfinal place. Thank you very much indeed. I'm gone. I'd like to start with John. I would. He burnt the pork chop. I mean, all the guy did was take chilli sauce from a bottle, put it in a pan, and then stick it in the oven. And he burnt it. It just wasn't up to standard. That crumble was dry. It needed something else. Probably a different cook. That would have been a really good start. And it just made a pig's ear of it, basically. I think we were hoodwinked yesterday. John's out. Let's move on. Now, we've got Andrew and we've got Elisa. Andrew's prawn dish with the pasta, couscous, rocket, a little bit of chilli, I thought was nice. There weren't any mistakes, but it wasn't a great dish. It just missed something. It needed something wet, some sort of sauce, just to take it up one more pace, and also you can just get it on your fork. Mm. The dessert, the yoghurt, inspired, pistachio nuts for texture. He had a complete, perfect, wonderful dessert. That chocolate talk tasted great. We have eaten in many restaurants where you don't get desserts as good as that. Elisa, I thought her starter was bordering on dull. Tomato was the main flavour. It just didn't hold together. It wasn't a tart that you wanted to go back in and eat because actually, physically, you couldn't get it in your mouth. Her main course, the aubergine, the mullet, the longestine, and that crisp bread were brilliant. That worked. I mean, that was a really gorgeous dish. She knows how to taste. She knows how to cook and she works seriously hard. Everything that's in me and I wanted to achieve in those stages, I did. Hopefully it's enough. It's, it's hard because both of these guys have had one very, very good dish and there aren't any mistakes in either of them. I can sort of touch the quarterfinal, but I don't want to just touch it. I want to grab it with both hands and I don't want to let go. We're looking for somebody who will actually be able to grasp hold of the idea of becoming a professional chef. Who's it going to be? Well done, you three. You guys have worked very, very hard. We only have one quarterfinal place, and we have made that decision. Our winner, our quarterfinalist, is Elisa. shaky. I still can't believe I'm here. It's taking over my life. It's, I'm that determined. Knowing the fact that I made a mess of it probably makes it even worse than it, than it should be. I thoroughly enjoyed myself and it's no way going to stop me from getting to where I want to be. I went through. <laughs> Elisa will be back for the quarter-final, where she'll face three other exceptional cooks.